so if uh, if I do want to go to the route of doing it myself I have to install the plugin that lets me do that and it's going to be a pretty easy here this says it's very well regarded it's compatible etc I can just easily install and I've taught um, a version of this class for several years now and I see it getting easier and easier to set up. It used to be a little bit more more daunting for people, especially newer uh, people that are newer to this. But the process is I've installed it, then I have to activate it, and there should pop up then a step-by-step -step guide to further help me set it up. <coughs> yep, here it is here. So in the old days, it would just uh, put you in your site, and, you, and it says, "Okay, you've got work, you've got WooCommerce. Have fun." But then now it walks you to this really nice wizard to fill in a variety of important information uh, that our, our website will need. So first of all, where where's your store located? What's its address? Here's what I'm saying about all of this information um, so that uh, your, your site is more legitimate. But also, if you're shipping out products, you want it to keep track for shipping purposes, you know, payment purposes. So I'm going to set US. And for the moment, I'll just put 123 Fake Street right there in San Diego. 1919. Oops, state. 1919. I'm going to be collecting things in dollars. And here's something interesting I plan to sell both physical and digital products, or only physical or only digital. So, most likely for myself, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to be selling these things that are only you know physical products I'm not gonna be uh, emailing someone a cupcake it's gonna be a real product but if I have both of those types of products I can do that or only one the point of that is it will give you different features different sorts of screens later on so that you can easily set up your your, your e-commerce site and we've also got, I will also be selling products or services in person. So this is another module that it'll sort of activate later. And um, I might, you know, I might actually do that. Victor's Bakery, yeah, I also have an actual physical location. And I'm going to be selling the products online. I might want to turn that on. By default, it asks for usage tracking. It will anonymously sort of like track your site so that it can improve itself in theory. Uh, you can turn that off without any adverse problem. This is the whole thing about privacy online and such. Um, I would personally turn it off. Other people can help with the usage tracking, but I would turn it off on my things. And to put the notes here, you will get a wizard that steps you through setup. Fill in basic info location etc location currency etc these things that you set up at this point you can change them whenever you want if I put the wrong thing right now I can go back and make changes I can always go back to the settings and make changes so um, real or how do they word it physical and digital products and so it'll step me through all of that let's go okay payment do you see at the top we have a progress bar payment shipping recommended activate it and we're ready to go so via payments right here we have these ways to collect to collect money one of the things about this uh, online shopping cart that I'm setting up is I want an easy way to collect people's money uh, credit card debit card whatever I've noticed that it kinda leads you a little bit in a direction that I wouldn't quite recommend it's saying, okay, set yourself up, or or use uh, use Stripe as the way to collect payment information. Stripe is is one way, one of many ways. It's secure and all of that. 
It's just I personally have not had enough of experience to tell you the full answer about is this good or bad. If they're recommending it, it's probably pretty good. I personally have, for clients, more experience using PayPal. You know, you've probably seen Square all over the place. It's those little squares that you just swipe and you, you pay. So all of these are probably perfectly fine. They all need a little bit of a further setup. But here it's leading you towards this one, which I don't have a lot of experience with, so I'm going to switch it over to PayPal to, to be able to continue. Question. This is the part that, yes, so then we get to payment methods. This is the part that you, you can't, you cannot quite avoid for there to be some sort of fees. Whenever there's monetary transactions, that's when there's always some sort of middleman taking some sort of cut. How much does it cost? We have to go look in their website and it'll tell you how much. I can't tell you off the top of my head, but it's some percentage like 2.9% or something per sale, <coughs> which could add up. You know, other places might be 5%. You just have to read the documentation. Some are like 0.1%. It just really depends. Uh, but whenever there's someone, whenever there's money, there's someone in the middle. Target. Whenever we go to Target, Walmart, whatever, and and purchase with a credit card, they're getting charged some amount that we never see, and it's millions of dollars. Do you ever go to a restaurant and they say, "Sorry, we don't take Discover," because Discover's fee to that business is too high for them, so they don't do it. So there's almost always somewhere in the middle that takes some cut. Maybe if we go to learn more, do we see some fees over here somewhere? Or if it's under ten dollars, they say fifty cent charge. Yeah, exactly. Which is illegal. <laughs> some of them, some of these other companies, just want to uh, do it the easiest way, and they just say whatever amount. Okay. I guess my question was, do you know if any of them is cheapest, or does it depend on how long I, I wouldn't be able to answer because again, I have the most experience in PayPal. I need to educate myself a little bit more on these. But looking at the Stripe website, they say 2.9% plus $0.30. Cents. But then, for instance, Venmo is free on certain charges. Like, you know, like but Venmo doesn't quite have the whole infrastructure of like a product inventory and catalog. It's a lot more like for one-offs, okay. or paying the rent and such, mm -hmm. uh, or paying people for a lunch and such. So Venmo could be, and that's one of the up-and-coming ways as well, that could be a way to do it because their fees, yeah, very, very good fees, zero uh, or whatever. But in this route of using a WordPress powered website with WooCommerce, it doesn't seem like Venmo is an option at the moment. I don't doubt that eventually they will integrate it because Venmo is becoming very popular. I don't doubt they'll have it. Square, years ago, Square, like in 2012, that was a twinkle in their eye. And it was like, that's going to fail. Who's going to want, who's going to take on Visa and all of them? And it's still around, and it's worth billions because it did get into this marketplace. Venmo, most likely, too. But at the moment, it doesn't seem to be an option. So we will say um, payment methods. They all take <coughs> some cut of the transaction. Read the documentation and compare. So popular ones, Stripe, Square, PayPal. PayPal's been around literally 20 years. And in internet time, that is forever. So they've been around uh, for a long time. They're very secure. Square, since about 2012, in internet time, that's a while too. That's about to be 10 years, you know, rounding it up. And Stripe, they're like one of the newest ones. I think they've only been around like maybe two years or so, not to put them down, of course, but they do seem to be getting a lot of traction. So all of them are, are the correct one to choose. Do you have any thoughts on Intuit? The one I <coughs> Intuit from uh, in, Intuit, like the big famous. Quicken. Uh, well, uh, yeah, Quicken, Intuit, and all of that. Yeah, Intuit's been around also for a long, long time. And they're trying to get into this space as well because it's 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 profitable and, and all of that. So I have not used it. I can't vouch for it. 
but coming from a big company like that I don't doubt that it's also good and their fees are probably also competitive they're all competing with each other so uh, let's just say that I'll set that up I'll continue gets set up in a moment we go to the next step shipping okay this is one of the ones one of the most complicated uh, parts to teach because it's really going to depend on people's um, situation so we've got here we've created two shipping zones for the US and the rest of the world below you can set these details okay so if I'm shipping things within the US that's a price and things not in that zone is another price and here we've got at the moment flat rate and free shipping now if I'm selling a product that weighs a lot versus weighs a little then that's different fees to ship it this flat rate let's say everything costs two dollars well for something very small like one little book that might be I'm charging too much shipping but then for like a big cake I'm not charging enough so this is a hard part to set up because at the beginning right here it just to streamline the process it doesn't give you a lot of options your shipping is either flat rate or free on a separate screen you can set uh, more complex details for the prices of things and set up the feature about how much does it cost to ship via weight or size location and all of that so let's just say for the moment all my shipping will be an extra five dollars flat rate in the US and I don't know, nine dollars global those, pro those prices are probably probably wrong because then it says over here if you'd like to offer live rates we have these other features which I'll put into the notes it's shipping default is flat rate or same price for everything or we've got the um, free <coughs> shipping other options are available And there's a link. There's a link that that's uh, telling me right there. And I'll just put it in the notes. And remember, I'll give you these notes uh, at the end of the day. Because I want to get like official pricing from the post office or FedEx and so forth. Now, uh, hmm, that's that's a funny that's a funny way to write free. So some of these things are, are not. And again, this is all of this infrastructure that when you have something else like Etsy or, or eBay or whatever, they take care of some of this infrastructure stuff. And I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing it yourself, but I'm just saying that just like in a real world business, you have expenses, you have expenses in a digital business. set up shipping labels at home so that the that the postal worker can pick up the item right from my doorstep uh, I can turn that on or off and again if I'm doing this with virtual or digital products I won't even get these options because my product doesn't actually weigh anything and it won't cost anything to ship there's some recommendations here do you want us to also add a a theme focused on e-commerce I can get a preview of what it looks like over here um, kinda straightforward it gets the job done it's not amazing looking but it's got already itself set up for product pictures and a nice layout and so forth or I could go over to the WordPress theme directory and pick a different one or go to Theme Forest and download one there. 
with this one that it's recommending for me. I'll, I'll start off with it, sure. Um, taxation is another thing that I have to deal with. How much does it cost to ship a product from California to New York, or California to Moscow, Idaho, or Russia? MailChimp, Facebook, so it gives me these extra features uh, that I might think about adding. How to add social media to my website so that when someone finds my product, they can let their friends and family know on Facebook. Or MailChimp, I can have these newsletters where I can capture people's email addresses and send them marketing materials and all of that. So probably for most people, these recommendations are going to be good because I, I, I want to get the word out for my business, so Facebook. I want to get more user engagement, so maybe emails. I want to deal with taxes. I want to get a nice looking design. And then we'll say recommendation, recommended. Add extra features like e-commerce focused theme, taxation, email campaigns, Facebook, So those are the recommendations that it's giving me here before I fully set up my account. And let's see, connect to Jetpack. So this is another thing here. Store's almost ready. To activate some things like this, you'll need to set up Jetpack. You'll also get these other features down at the bottom. I have to skip it for the moment. I don't, I don't want to go through this extra process. But Jetpack is another, is another uh, plugin, another uh, free plugin to add to your site to give it more capabilities. I would recommend it. Add Jetpack for more features. Free is very good. There's the paid version. The free version gives you a lot of good, a lot of good options. I use it all the time. Uh, I've used it all the time with clients just to get like more features that really help their sites. So it says right here, to activate services like payment method and automated taxes and shipping labels, you need this extra plugin that activates some of these extra features. So on the previous screen it says, would you like this, this, and this? Well, in order for you to have those things, you then have to set up a Jetpack account, which is, which is free, you just need an email. Skip this. Uh, would you like to subscribe to their newsletter? Create a product, import, dashboard, etc. <coughs> yes. This is only two-day class It depends on who you're asking for that question. You, most likely, the, the service provider that you're paying for your website probably can uh, help you through a lot of this process. However, it does happen that they will often say, or that they might say, that if it's something unrelated to their particular service, they cannot help you too much. So it doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt to inquire about how much help they can give you, but your service provider, yes, that's going to be one of the main ones where you're paying for your for your service there. They most likely will be able to help you to some degree to set this stuff up. I'm going to skip this for the moment, go back to my dashboard. This is going to pop up to tell me at the top here. Okay, in my case, I've got an older version of WordPress. Um, I need to click the update button. 
but I would get these other messages like, okay, in order for PayPal to work, you need to go to this screen and set it up. In order for Facebook to work, you need to go here. And you don't have a secure connection. I don't have SSL, so it's still it's still guiding me to do several things. And this is what I'm saying about I've been teaching this for a while and I, I do like how they keep improving it and making it easier for people to use. So we'll say uh, mind the messages that WooCommerce gives you, that WordPress or WooCommerce. gives you when setting up your site. They really guide you well nowadays. 